Hello everyone. In this session, we'll be starting with a new topic called complex numbers. As name suggests, it looks very complex, but actually that is not the case. And we'll start actually from scratch. So consider say first equation as x square plus one equal to zero. Another equation as x square plus four equal to zero. And third equation as x square plus five equal to zero. Now, immediate thing what comes to our mind is that these look very simple equations, quadratic equations, and we have already seen how to solve them. But please see those equations closely. Do we have any real solution to these equations? I mean, are there any real numbers which will satisfy these equations? And we realize that there is no real number whose square can be a negative quantity. Why do I say so? Because if x square plus one equal to zero, for example, is to be satisfied, then x square will have to be minus one so that that minus one finishes plus one to get answer zero. And there is no real number x of which square is minus one. So obviously we do not have any solution in set of real numbers to these equations. Then how do we proceed? We do not run away from the situation. What we say is that there is some imaginary unit whose square is minus one. And by assuming this, can we proceed further? And to our surprise, we realize that there can be x equal to plus minus i, whose square would be minus one. And hence, that would satisfy first equation. And similarly, x equal to plus minus two i and x equal to plus minus root five i, if I take, they will satisfy the remaining two equations. And what we have done? We have found some solutions to these equations, which are surely not real in nature. When I say real, I mean real numbers. They are not real numbers. And they have something which we have not seen before. And what is that? We have written their i. And what is i? i we have taken some imaginary unit whose square is minus one. Okay, so does this solve the situation? Yes, what we are saying is, we will start now from here fresh and we assume some imaginary unit whose square is minus one and we'll proceed from here. And we immediately think of some mathematical operations because as we are introducing some new numbers, so obviously whatever operations we have done in the past in case of real numbers or natural numbers, etc., are they applicable here also? So we go for some powers of i. Why do we go for powers straight away? Reason is that i square is minus one. So it is easy to check first what are the powers of i. And if we are talking about integral powers, first is my case as positive integral powers of i. And I start with i equal to under root minus one and I go for i square, which is minus one. And how do I proceed further? I will take i cube as i square into i and i square I will replace by minus one. So answer would be minus i. And then i fourth, that is i square whole square and i square is minus one, substitute that and get answer as plus one. Now, I'm not writing here more powers of i. Reason is very clear. If you go for i raised to five, you can use any of these combinations and get answer for i raised to five and similarly for next powers of i. And now let us check what are negative integral powers of i. When I say negative integral powers, what kind of powers we are expecting? Like one upon i square, one upon i cube, etc. So let us take them one by one. Now, first is one upon i. Now, i appearing in the denominator actually troubles us because we do not know yet how do we go for a division of imaginary numbers. But there is some trick. What we do, we multiply and divide by i and get i square in the denominator and that i square we replace by minus one. So we get rid of that i from the denominator and answer for one upon i turns out to be minus i. Okay. Now, next would be i raised to minus two, which is one upon i square. This is simple. This is straight away, which I can write as minus i. I go for next power as i raised to minus three, which is one upon i cube. Now there are ways to do it. That either you write that i cube as in the denominator as i square into i and replace i square by minus one. Or another way is multiply and divide by i. If I multiply and divide by i, I will get it as i upon i raised to four. i raised to four just now we have obtained, that is plus one. So answer would be plus i. Now I go for i raised to minus four, which is one upon i raised to four and i raised to 4 is plus 1, replace that and get final answer as 1. Again, here also I have taken only few negative integral powers of i, rest all you may try on your own. Now, from here, if I have to proceed, 
what would be my next step? That since we are learning topic complex numbers, so let me define once for all what we mean by a complex number. A complex number z, which is of the form a plus ib, and where a and b are real numbers, i square we will be taking as minus 1. Such a form, such a number is called a complex number. And now there are few fixed terms used in case of complex numbers. For example, a is called real part, which is written as re and then inside bracket as z. And b is called imaginary part and it is written as im and inside bracket z. im stands for imaginary part. Now, when you are seeing such a complex number, which actually looks like complex thing, a plus ib, this form we have not seen before. But one thing we must understand, then when we shifted from natural number to say whole number or from whole number to integer, every time we have taken some care. What was that care? That set of whole numbers contained set of natural numbers, set of integers contained set of whole numbers, etc. That means any new set which appears that contains the previous old set. The problem was with imaginary numbers, since imaginary numbers were not real in nature, so obviously set of imaginary numbers wouldn't have contained all real numbers. So there was the problem and hence we tried to define complex number in a new form. We write it as some part real and some part as imaginary part. So we call a complex number z as a plus ib where a is real part and b is called imaginary part. Okay, so let us take one example. And if I am writing that example as 2 minus root 3 i, then what is real part? It is 2. And what is imaginary part? That is minus root 3. So imaginary z, we write it as i m inside bracket z equal to minus root 3. Now, realize this, that every time we will not be so fortunate that real part also is there and imaginary is also there. And I am sure many of you must be thinking that complex number, will it contain real number also? So whenever b is 0, that means only a part will remain there. So obviously number would be a real number. Let me tell you one thing that in books, there are people, those who write purely real. There is nothing called purely real. Real number, name is real number only. So if b is 0, we will be calling the number as real, right? The complex number would turn out to be nothing but a real number. And another thing is, if we take one example, which is, very simple one that if I take z equal to minus 2 or z equal to 5, it is nothing but a real number. Now I go for next and what I'm making now is I'm making a at 0. That means only b i part will remain and obviously number would be called a purely imaginary one which we have just seen some time back. Okay. So let us take a quick example of purely imaginary number and z equal to 4i, z equal to 7i, they are purely imaginary numbers. In the process, whole thing, if I am writing z equal to a plus ib, what we have learnt is that every real number is a complex number and hence the set of entire real numbers would be contained in set of complex numbers. Now are we not interested in moving further and taking more operations on complex numbers? Yes, we are. So let us proceed further and we go further for equality of complex numbers. Remember, Equality of real numbers was very easy. Now, equality of complex number may look little complex. Now, when do we say two complex numbers are equal? Definition is that if z1 is a1 plus ib1 and z2 is a2 plus ib2 and we are saying these two are equal complex numbers, that happens only when a1 equal to a2 and b1 equal to b2. Mind you, please, I have written there i double f. That means if and only if. Means if you have a1 equal to a2 and b1 equal to b2 and if you are writing z1 as a1 plus i b1 and z2 as a2 plus i b2 then z1 equal to z2 and other way if z1 equal to z2 then a1 equal to a2 and b1 equal to b2 that is the requirement for equality of complex numbers. So z1 equal to z2 again same thing equivalent to now I am writing other notation as real z1 equal to real z2 that I have written once more only for you to get accustomed of those terms R E and I M. Now, take one example. Now, if I am taking Z1 as 3 minus IB and Z2 as A plus 5I and if I declare that Z1 equal to Z2, means what? Real parts will have to be equal and imaginary parts will have to be equal. Now, what we have learned in the entire thing? Here we are talking about only equality of numbers. 
I'm sure some of you must be thinking, can one complex number be smaller than other or greater than other? Then understand once for all, there is no such thing. You do not compare complex numbers like this. So there is nothing called Z1 less than Z2 or Z1 greater than Z2. So A plus IB greater than C plus IB does not make any sense. So remember one thing, you cannot compare two complex numbers in their greater than or less than sign. If I take one example, it is 7 plus 3i greater than 2 plus i. Does this make any sense? No. Okay. So let us move from here and proceed for further algebra of complex numbers. Now when I say algebra of complex numbers, we are expecting some mathematical operations to be done over set of complex numbers. Now first thing which comes immediately to, to our mind is addition and subtraction. Now can we add two complex numbers or can I subtract one complex number from other complex number? Then how do we do so? If Z1 is A plus IB and Z2 is C plus IB, then what would be Z1 plus Z2? Z1 plus Z2 would be that you just add the real parts, then plus I times add the imaginary part. And what about the subtraction part? That you subtract C from A and subtract D from B. Right? So A minus C will become real part of the output and B minus D would become the imaginary part. Now can you see here something that I have written Z1 plus Z2 and Z1 minus Z2 and I am seeing the answers are again nothing but complex numbers. That means when you add two complex numbers you get a complex number. When you subtract one complex number from other complex number your final answer would be again a complex number. So let us take one example. If I take Z1 equal to minus 2 plus 5i and if I take z2 equal to 4 plus 3i, mind you please only one of the operations I am trying here, say subtraction, what we do is subtract real part from the real part and imaginary part from the imaginary part and further simplify it. Now we further go for next operation as multiplication and division. Now intuitively I know what I am going to do like in case of addition and subtraction that we will be just multiplying term by term if I have to go for multiplication. So what would be Z1, Z2? That I multiply A plus IB to C plus IB. And how do I do that? Actually term by term multiply. Wherever I square comes, that would be replaced by minus 1. Simplify it further and you will get answer as AC minus BD plus I times AD plus BC. Now this is about multiplication part. If you ask me, Division is comparatively little troublesome. That too, initially you feel that, later on you will be master. Now Z1 upon Z2, how does it look? It would look like A plus IB upon C plus IB. That I appearing in the denominator troubles. So what we will have to do? We will have to multiply and divide by C minus ID to get rid of that I. And I do that further and I would realize that numerator would be nothing but A plus IB into C minus ID. That again term by term you will have to multiply, collect the terms without i at one place, with i at another place. Denominator is comparatively easy to simplify, that is c plus id into c minus id, which is again of the form a plus b a minus b, so product a square minus b square, that formula you can apply and simplify it further to get ac plus bd upon c square plus d square, that is the part without i, plus i times bc minus ad upon c square plus d square. Mind you please, when you see all these four operations, every time your answer, output, outcome, that is again a complex number. That means all these four operations are, this is called binary operations, which we have seen in case of set theory. So these four operations are binary operations on set of complex numbers. Now, we can take one example before we proceed and that I have written as Z1 equal to 2 plus 3i and Z2 equal to 1 plus 2i then what would be Z1 upon Z2? Exactly as I said some time back, you just multiply and divide by their C minus ID part. So here C minus ID is nothing but 1 minus 2i. I multiply and divide by that and I simplify further to get 8 upon 5 plus 1 upon 5 times i. So my answer is again in the form of A plus IB. So it's a complex number. Now this is all about our first session. Next time when we meet, we will come with something else. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have liked the video, please click here to subscribe. And if you wish to buy the book, you will have to click on this side. Thank you.